Okay, so I was kind of uh, wrong about waiting two weeks because apparently the package came one week earlier than I expected. So here's what I was going to do the review on it is the FM53 and the Airboss LBM. Um, currently, I think there's only a handful of people who've actually paid the expensive price for these. Yeah, I got mine half off. That's why I went for it. Um, so here's the... I. I believe this is the actual bag for it um i think it's just a modified c4 carrier i had to actually add my own belt because it was designed to be integrated with the equipment that was provided for testing by airboss the first thing you'll see is here there's actually a safety strap for the actual latch well the the latch for the carrier pull that back it opens up completely with two plastic strands that are inside the rim of the bag to close it and seal it inside you'll see that there's one storage compartment probably four extra filters is what i assume or one extra filter and enough space for the face piece and some accessories close that up fold it like that and then close it all the way Then if we twist over here to this side, you will have one large pouch, which when opened, you will have one name tag holder there. You'll have one pouch inside there, and then a secondary pouch right there. Then we'll move on to, it also has one other pouch, which you can probably use for filters or any secondaries, which they have as holders right here. Then move on to the face piece, which I also have the FM53 that I'm going to compare. So first off, it actually is 40 millimeter and spring assisted, which means that this is actually air locking, which later in the video I'll have a secondary segment that leads on to test fitting the masks. So both sides already are filter ready. Uh, so both are spring assisted, and this is actually the original filter that came with it. It is said to be an Airboss low burn-in filter, probably for CS agents, and that's it. Um, no, there's not asbestos. It's probably just a paper layer, like a double-sided uh, paper layer. So all they have is a filter plug, no diaphragm or anything right there. Then you pop off the exhale valve cover. C4-style diaphragm. Then you have the drinking tube that loops around, which actually has a mold part of it. That is the holder, very odd shaped drinking tube. Uses what I think is the older US style, but what the Canadians still use. Plug that back in there, make sure it is folded over there. Let's see if I can do this quickly. The one gripe I have is the fact of, it is a pain to put this diaphragm cover back on. Looks cool, but it is a pain. It just takes a minute. I think I got it. No. Okay. There we go. So then it also comes with one sun glare out cert, which is also just referred to as tinted pops in like so then here's the inside also to tell the sizes it is not on the face piece it is face piece it is actually on the head harness so you can see there lbm medium slash large the head harness is non-replaceable i mean you really if you wanted to try to you can replace it but it is permanently attached unless you cut it off um it also has a quick uh, latch system, so basically the bottom jaw straps are quick fastening, and that is to accustom it to your head. Then flip over the head harness.
This is the inside of the mask. Mine is missing the drinking tube, sadly, which I'm trying to source one, but the mask alone is hard. Thinking about parts for it is hilarious. Um, it kind of uses the style of an M40 uh, oral nasal cup, which is black. There's the inhalation valves for the nose cup. And then you'll see the filter thread valves right here. And if you watch, Sorry, I'm using a very terrible stand. So you can actually see that the spring gives way by pressing that center dial, which if you watch, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but. So it's slightly opened, uh, which means that you can actually breathe through it now. This is just a CS canister also, I'm pretty sure. I mean, this is a P100 filter, so practically worthless for any CBRN scenarios. Um, then on to the M50, or the M53, sorry, FM53. You have the GPCF50 filter, which is a CBRN NIOSH rated filter which stands for general purpose conformal filter, um, obviously for the 50 series. Then you have the M53 VPU, which kind of self-explanatory. It's just, you know, a voice projection unit for the Avon FM53. Then you have the Avon FM53 face piece, size medium, right-handed, with updated VREU lever, which if you do not know what the VREU lever, this is negative pressure, which is a typical APR pressure. And then you have positive pressure, which means there's a spring valve inside here that's now pushing against the XL valve, making it a PAPR compatible and SCBA compatible uh, positive pressure, which means that spring is pushing against the XL valve inside of there, making it have more resistance against the XL valve. One moment, so I can put back the head harness. So, this mask also does not have one of those spring assists. None of the 50 series does. But the Avon M50 does have a, uh, a pressure. It, it does have a pressure assist, but it's using uh, rubber plugs that whenever the filter presses against them, they fold outwards, which is, in my opinion, a in superior method, just because rubber can deform after a long amount of time and excessive heat. So that can jeopardize, jeopardize combat availability with anyone that's issued it. Um, this one did come with a drinking tube, thank God. Uh, it does have the microphone adapter and microphone. You will see that there is the actual filter gasket and also wind reflector. This one also does have the sun glare outsert or also known as tinted outserts. I'm not sure if it's the five shade. I know there is a five shade outsert. So this one I don't really like installing uh, lenses on because the 50 series has this stupid rubber ring on the edge of the uh, lens for installing, which I see it as Kind of problematic because it's not as easy as the LBM where it's a snap in place instead of a put into basically rubber loops, which you can see right here that you have to actually hit it at a certain angle in order to get it to go in. That's what she said. Um, so, yeah. Now, one plus of the Avon FM53 is first, it has communications relay compatibility, which means that it can use three prong, which is often used with air crew and also two prong, which is often used with combat vehicle crews, uh, VPUs like you saw, see right here. And then it can also be used with certain microphones and such used for special operations and all that. And luckily this VPU is not a clip on nor a thread on. It is a little bit of the best world where it is a threaded clip on and it only uses one swift movement. Now, they also went smart with the design on making it low stream or seamless where you can just plug it in 
and have a little retainer for the wire right here, which to get it in there, you just have to unplug the drink tube for a second, put it in there, close it off, and it still has the availability for a microphone jack, which I did not know, and I was actually quite impressed. Uh, just like the LBM, or the LBM just like the Avon FM53, both utilize a shut-off drink valve for in case the drinking valve or the drinking tube actually becomes jeopardized, like it gets cut open or whatnot, where it will then become jeopardized and could leak in chemical agents, much like what the M40 actually was capable of doing, where it did not lock and chemical agents could go inside of it. Same with the MCU and M45. Now with these, they both use an air locking solution. Another thing I like about the M50 is that it is conformal capable, which means it is able to use conformals and actually look pretty good with them. Like it, it, it truly is conformal. Now with the LBM, you can use conformals, but it's not as seamless. Still looks pretty good. It's just you have that gap that sits right here, but it also keeps much of the filter mass away. One thing I like over the LBM than I do the FM53 is weight distribution. Due to the fact of that the LBM sits much closer to your face. Here, I'll take off the filter so it's a lot easier to see. So, peripheral seals lined up. Avon FM53. Here, actually, it'd be unfair with that VPU. So face seals lined up, LBM is much closer, which is one of the selling points by Airboss is that it's low burden, which means that on the user, one, breathing resistance is almost minimal, and two, it has no burden on the face. There is almost no weight, whereas this weighs probably about three pounds. This weighs one pound, one ounce. The LBM, the LBM weighs one pound, one ounce. So... In comparison, much different. And the LBM doesn't do any of the bull with, oh, we're just going to give you one cheek for the filter. All LBMs come standard with both cheeks, and they're compatible with Airboss's bayonet filters. I tried it with the M50 filter. The M50 filter is just a little bit larger, but I'm still trying to see if there's a way to work around that. It would be really cool to actually have any type of bayonet lug to work on this mask, which hopefully Airboss makes with their second generation of the LBM compatible with that, but unlikely. Um, I think that's about the general portion of both of these masks. I will come back in about a few seconds to show you the test and also the fact of how this air locks where this doesn't with the filter off and then show the decompress of it on. Also a little, uh, Statement is, I will not show my face on YouTube or anywhere, anywhere really, just personal preference kind of thing. Um, so first, little statement is, right now, notice how I have long hair, and typically with a lot of people, they have problems with head harnesses, and that's because of long hair breaching the seal, and that's been a lot of problems. So first, I'm going to show the fact that the maximum suck this mask can get On, bad, bad. So basically, I was able to wear the mask without the head on the sun because of the air locking feature. It actually creates a suction cup within the actual face mask, making it much more, how do I say it, basically it's easier to leak test and it's also a lot easier in a combat scenario when swapping filters of course, basically like the M50. Secondly, hair is not a problem. Due to the skull cap, that is actually a full mesh skull cap that covers from hairline all the way back to the spinal cord that actually aligns with your head. All the hair is actually pulled back. And they did that on purpose because the major problem was the fact that most head harnesses do not comply with long hair. And now my ex of I was popping, which is awesome. 
also another thing I forgot to touch, touch base on. Um, okay, so filter swapping and also filter weight distribution. So for instance, a lot of people have a problem with heavy weight filters on their face mask. Well, typically the closer it is, the less you're gonna feel it because all the weight is distributed evenly on the face piece. With this, there's no feeling with it. Okay, so first, there is no air locking. So that means that there's no suction cup, harder to make a pressure test, and not really good for swapping filters out in the field. Also, I will be testing the BPU, so make sure to pay attention when I'm doing the LBM snippet because the diaphragm is present on an LBM, no diaphragm on this. All we have is the BPU, which is microphone operated. This is without, this is with it on. Big difference, yes, but you also gotta remember this is a voice projection unit operated by microphone. The other one is just a plastic membrane with uh, a direct housing. Whereas this is microphone to electronic sound projector or an ESP. So the other problem I have with this is you'll notice that it actually did not pull all my hair back. It's kind of trash in my opinion because for operational standards, if I don't want to cut down my hair, this will not work. Like right now I can actually feel a pressure leak right here. So kind of trash in my opinion. Now luckily there's also you can hear the actual visible difference of the pressure. So this is normal negative pressure, which is for normal APR use, like right now. This is with um, the positive pressure for SCB and PAPR use. So harder to exhale, but you gotta also remember that the positive pressure use is for Forced air units, much like my PAPR right here. Um, so, really think about it. good ingenuity in this mask for special purpose use. The LBM, more of a general purpose mask because for, it matches all the criteria for general purpose. This matches for special purpose when you're not really using it for, you know, heat in the moment kind of stuff. So this is more of like when communication is key and when SCB and PAPR is key. Okay, so as a summary, we have the low burden mask, which is the Airboss LBM. Overall, I would say material-wise, pretty much the same as the Avon M53, M50, and etc. But I would say the functionality of types of materials in the sense of what they built I would say filter thread housings, I would say, are better. The, overall, this, the core construction is way better than, say, the M53 for different purposes. Now, I would also say the Avon M53 is better for different purposes than the LBM. Overall, general purpose, if you're just going to be some mini home soldier, air quote, Victor Frondo, um, I'd say LBM. Now, if you're going to be you know, 12 out of 10 operator spell with an eight and, you know, the, the cool guy out of the group, I would say probably still the LBM. Now, if you want to be that one guy that uses an SCBA sinks, you know, 20 grand into a preppers kit and, you know, buys into the normie stuff in 53. Now I do love the M 53 but, you know, because everybody, every collector's got a go-to mask, it'd be the LBM. Because LBM has functionality over specialized functionality. Hence, the uh, positive pressure and negative pressure switch. Whereas this has the filter locks, it has an easy clip system for the outserts, has an easier head harness to use, low bur basically... It's fully integral, whereas this, it conflicts with certain gear setups and all that. Like, even the carrier is integral, integral, 
whereas the M53 carrier has its own straps and everything and can conflict with other gear you're already using. Are they bad? Are either of them bad masks? No, but they are for certain reasons. M53 is bad if you're just trying to be practical and use basically a bug out type mask that actually meets your needs. Whereas like the M53 is basically, as I said, special purpose, SCBAs, powered air units, APR. You want to use the LBM only for APR because what it lacks is a spring assist. This has a spring assist and can swap from spring assist or normal APR. So this one's actually more expensive on eBay. Like you can get new in the bag for from Airboss for about 450 to 500. I got this one for 255 and that's including shipping. This one, I know a few people who are even selling them as cheap for 600. And then you can find from approvedgasmask.com, the all too safe haven for masks, sarcasm, for 1600 or 1200 to 1600 depending on the kit. You know what I pay for this? The entire kit, everything, comms, like the microphone, the VPU, conformal, and everything? Like, 280 Army gas mask is not the place to buy masks. So, you know, uh, other than that, if you asked me personally, I'd say buy an LBM first, just because it's like, it's cheaper, but it's also kind of cooler in my opinion. But, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. Um... The M53 is also more of like a gimmick mask, like it's got more popularity than the Airboss LBM, just because the LBM's been around probably for three, four years, whereas the M53 and the FM53 and the M50s and everything have been around so much as early as 2007. So definitely different markets, just in the sense of um, popularity amongst the crowds. But I've noticed the LBM is starting to get popular with a lot of people, especially on the Facebook groups. So this is pretty much the only review I can fathom right now. I'll be doing a lot more videos here soon, probably. Um, if I actually get people following, definitely show some requests. Uh, I will have probably a video of certain stuff in my collection that I'll review if you guys ask for it, etc. I mean, I say you guys, but I'm literally talking to no one right now. But yeah, hopefully this gains some ground so then I can actually divert information to here rather than just screaming at somebody on Discord and them not even realizing what I'm saying.